we've got, well, I'm so grateful to her. We've got Andriel Madison, and Andriel is the NHS, wait for it, Forest and Green Space Project Officer at the Centre for Sustainable Healthcare. And I'm very indebted to her because we did have one of our presenters drop out uh, last week. And Andriel, bless her, has stepped in at very short notice to give her the benefit, uh, to give us the benefit of her wisdom on fantastic topic here, space to breathe, valuing green space for staff well-being. If ever there's been a time to promote staff well-being, it's now. So, Andriel, I'm going to hand straight on to you. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Um, I hope you can hear me. Thank you for having me. So it's a, it's a pleasure. Um, so this research project that we are presenting on today, it's a, a recent thing that we've done in collaboration with the Health Foundation. And um, so it touches more on that public health and wider determinants of health aspect. And it's something that we're very passionate about um, through the, uh, like he said, I'm a project officer at the Center for Sustainable Healthcare. And through our work, um, we work with the health system um, providing guidance and consultants consultancy on um, clinical practices, but as well as advocating for the use of green space for health and well-being. And um, this project focuses on staff specifically because that is a, a major issue at the moment. So just a, a quick data point here in 2018, nearly four in 10 staff reported feeling unwell as a result of work-related stress in the last 12 months. Um, so that is a major issue for NHS staff at the moment. Uh, and, and uh, you know, on the other hand, there is a, a lot of evidence on the positive effects of using green space for all kinds of mental health issues, including stress, fatigue, anxiety, depression, um, you know, among the many other physical um, benefits that you can get from spending time and exercising green space. But we set out to understand a little more about the use of green space at NHS sites and, and could these areas, could greenery be used to help NHS staff and combat the, the major issue that they have at the moment with, um, with the stress as a result of their um, work. Um, so we um, worked with three different NHS sites when carrying out our research. These sites are part of our NHS forest project, um, which has been running for over 10 years. Um, and we work with sites in all kinds of ways to encourage use of green space and in plant trees. Um, but for this research, we selected three sites that are quite different, uh, both in terms of location, but also um, in, in terms of um, the size of the, the sites and also in the number of staff at each site. Um, some of our research questions were um, focusing on investigating, just really trying to understand what is current, you know, what are the current practices of staff members um, in the NHS? Do they currently spend time in green space? Do they not? Um, and what do they think about doing so uh, if they do spend time in green spaces at work or do they perceive benefits from doing that? Um, and are there barriers that prevent staff members from being able to spend time in green space? Um, and, and finally, how does it compare? So how do those that spend time in green space fare in terms of their well-being in comparison that, to those that do not spend time in green spaces at work? Um, so um, the first thing that we did was try to understand, so looking at these three sites, what are the the current practices, what are the initiatives that they have in place to encourage staff to use um, green spaces? And then we carried out extensive interviews with staff members to understand their experiences with green spaces at work. And, and finally, we did some surveys to try to understand um, uh, how people compare. I'm sorry, you can hear the, the crying baby. Um, so how do people, people's well-being scores compare you know, between those that spend time in green space at work and, they, and those that do not? Um, and, and here are just some highlights from our qualitative work. Um, so the most common way that staff 
spent time in green spaces that um, they either notice or, or um, yeah, they take notice or, or actually spend time in green spaces at work is through walks um, and, and the most common way is um, during their breaks. Um, so staff um, reported making, taking the time to do so. So sometimes they may, you know, have lunch at their desk, but they would take the time to go out and, and, and go for a walk to, um, to go outside and just enjoy some time outside. And then the second most common form of taking notice of nature at work happens through um, also walks, but these are kind of incidental walks. So during the course of work, if they have to run an errand, um, staff reported making, um, you know, making sure that they took a route that allowed them to go outside and step outside for a moment. Um, and then other ways that staff reported spending time at work include um, going out with patients for those that that's an option, you know, escorting patients outside, uh, sometimes eating outside during their lunch or dinner breaks, and um, some, some staff did report walking to work, although that's a, a very limited amount. It's not a possibility for everyone. Um, right, and then in terms of understanding how the staff perceive spending time in green spaces at work, across the board, um, it's very clear that um, staff view that as a very positive experience. Those that spent time in green spaces at work reported feeling relaxed and calm after doing so and and for some it even helps them feel refreshed and energized as they return to work they reported having a clearer mind and being able to perform better when they're back at work so um very very positive um perception of spending time in green spaces at work and and that goes along with um our survey which showed that you know between the sites from 83 to 89 percent um, of staff said that they'd like to spend more time in green space and they think that, that, that doing so is very beneficial for them. And then we, we try to understand uh, what are the, the main barriers that prevent staff from spending time at green spaces. Um, and th by far the biggest one is the pressure of work uh, and that's very understandable, especially right now. But there are also many other interesting things that prevent them from, from doing so. And um, things such as um, the location of green areas, um, which is something that we, we need to keep in mind because, um, you know, as we discussed NHS sites, um, as newly new hospitals are built, that's something that, that should be considered. And um, creating green spaces that are accessible, that are, you know, close towards theaters. Um, and then there is also there is also a whole work culture aspect of accessing green space. So feeling that they don't have enough support from senior staff is a major issue that prevents them from from doing that. Um, and that's something that that needs to be addressed. Having that support for for doing something that actually improves the well being of staff. Um, and then other things um, such as the perception of sites, if there are no, if there are not enough sitting areas outside, for example, for staff to actually be able to go out and enjoy the area, or if they feel like it's not an appropriate area to be in, if um, they're scared that the patients, you know, if the patients are nearby and they are not going to perceive that that's uh, a break time, and so they will come up to staff and and that it's, you know, it's end up, gonna end up not being a break time for them. So those are some of the issues that staff experience um, that prevents them from accessing green space at work. Um, and, and then through our research, we tried to identify um, with the help of staff, what would help them in accessing um, green spaces and, and you know, toward improving their um, well-being their mental health and well-being. And um, so things vary. They go from actual site improvements, from having enough seating, as I mentioned. Um, and and it, staff also showed interest in, in participating in outdoor activities, having access to um, these communal activities with other staff is something that they'd like to, 
do uh, NHS sites. Um, and then uh, other things such um, the work culture that I mentioned, having that encouragement and, and feeling like um, they are allowed to do so are, are big things that would help them feel supported in, in accessing green space. And um, so our quantitative work um, um, looked into the comparisons, as I mentioned, um, of well-being scores and, and how um, individuals compare those that spend time in green spaces and those that do not. Um, and so besides the very positive effects that, you know, were showed, shown in our um, qualitative work, in, in the quantitative piece, it was very clear that those who spend time in green spaces at work had very um, much higher levels of well-being in comparison to those that did not. So the more individuals spent time in green spaces at work, the higher their um, well-being scores. And that was something that was really um, refreshing to find out and, and get a, um, an actual confirmation of um, of that being the case of um, the benefits of spending time in green space for NHS staff. Um, so this is just a you know a quick case study to showcase um, the the potential of using green spaces at NHS sites uh, um, because currently um, anxiety, depression, stress, and other mental health illnesses um, is the leading cause of absenteeism within the NHS. And that has many, many implications to the health system, both economic problems, but others as well. So um, improving the access to green space will improve the well-being of these employees and subsequently that improves the, the health system that makes it more effective as you have you know, staff showing up and things happening in the way that they were expected to happen. Um, so that's just a, you know, a, a little bit of what we've done on this one research project. And if you have any questions, my email is right there. Um, and feel free to contact me. I'll share the screen, um, the Slido screen, if I may. There are two, uh, I think, really, really pertinent questions. The first is about um, people asking what the tool was um, that you used to measure staff well-being. Oh, yes. Um, so we used, uh, it's called Warwick Edinburgh Mental Wellbeing Scale. Okay. And... Um, obviously, uh, urban areas uh, here in uh, the east of London, where I am, uh, are there, is there enough green space or how can we make uh, urban areas um, staff friendly? Um, so one of our sites is, um, it is in West London of, you know, the ones that were included in the research, but we work with NHS sites all across the country. And actually the, you know, the evidence base for experiencing the benefits of, of green space that varies, that, that goes from, you know, being in a park or very large green space, but you can also experience benefits from spending time in smaller green spaces, smaller gardens, or, um, you know, just from having areas with house plants and things like that. So there are possibilities for incorporating green space, even into um, very urban areas that the surroundings might not be, you know, as green as other areas of the country. Okay, um, and thank you. One final question, just right in now. Was it the short or full version of the uh, well-being uh, tool that you um, used? I would have to investigate that because I wasn't the one who did the data collection. Um, so it was our, our project manager, but I can get back to you with that. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, that was fantastic. Thank you, Andriel. Um, what, what a lovely insight into the promotion of green spaces for mental well-being. I, 